Hi, I'm that one girl that likes to talk a lot about houseplants, marina, and welcome to Millennia Planter. So today we're going to be diving into the world of pests. Ugh, the worst part, easily the worst part of owning houseplants and <laughs> how to prevent them, what I do to prevent them, how to treat them, the pests that I deal with. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely stick around and go ahead and get the video a thumbs up. The more thumbs up this video gets, the more plants I'm able to buy and the more content I'm able to provide for you. <laughs> Let's uh, dive into this video. First and foremost, Obviously, a pest is a bug <laughs> that is going to cause some damage and wreak some havoc in your plant collection. Fret not though, if you are on top of the on top of your plant care and if you constantly, well not constantly, but if you occasionally check your plants, occasionally dust them off, for the most part, you should be good. However, even if you do all this, you will still are bound to get pests. Everybody gets them, and if you haven't gotten them yet, just wait. <laughs> I went through my plant collection, my plant journey, probably for about a year before I dealt with pests, and my first one was Thrip. Thrips? Ugh. Awful. Truly awful. Especially somebody who, like, kind of despises bugs like me. I'm working on it. I know. They're great for the environment, but they're not good for my plants, and I don't want them in my house. The most common pests that you will see are thrips, which have this long, they're usually black, they have long, narrow bodies. They, the adults can fly. Ugh. And the worst part about them is that they actually burrow into the leaves themselves, into the foliage, in between, and bury their eggs in there. So getting rid of thrips is a bit of a hassle. You also have spider mites, the most common signs of spider mice, you will see webbing. They are really, really tiny. Sometimes you'll have to get a flashlight to see them. I like to take my phone flashlight and I like to tilt my leaves at different angles because sometimes one angle you're not gonna be able to see them. I'm also making sure I'm checking the area where the leaf meets the stem, meets the petiole because that's where a lot of spider mites like to be. And if you have a more established spider mite colony, you will most likely see some sort of webbing. It is kind of, it's kind of scary, not even gonna lie. <laughs> Especially if you're terrified of spiders like me. Once again, I'm working on it. The next really common ones are gonna be mealybugs. Mealybugs look like cotton balls. <laughs> Some people think they're kinda of cute. Can't relate. They really do look like little cotton balls on your plant. You also have aphids, which I feel like aren't as common, but they're still common. I don't really know too many people that have dealt with aphids, but aphids are kind of green. Sometimes they're white and they're bigger, so Thrips and aphids, I know, can kind of get confusing, but aphids are bigger. So if you have like a bigger looking type of bug <laughs> and not like a small, narrow one, then it's most likely an aphid. And then the last one you have is scale. And scale are little brown dots. Literally, that's what they look like. And they will just latch onto your plant, most likely the stem, and just chill there. That's what they do. <laughs> they have an outer shell that is hard and they just chill there. So if you start to see a bunch of little circular things on the stems and it can get on the leaves of your plants, it's most likely scale. So <laughs> I don't wanna jinx myself, but I have uh, so far, <laughs> knock on wood, only dealt with spider mites and thrips, which are terrible. I am just waiting for the day I get mealybugs because I do have a lot of Hoya and apparently mealies really do like Hoya. But as far as pest prevention, what I do, I used to spray my plants down monthly with some sort of spray. Now that my collection is as big as it is, I just, don't have the time for that and honestly I don't want to do it because that's a lot of work <laughs> on top of all the watering fertilizing and repotting I have to do all the time what I found to be most effective and this isn't obviously not going to be a hundred percent effective but I kind of swear by washing down your foliage or wiping down your foliage so every time I water my plants I do take them to the sink and I completely wash them down if it's a bigger plant I have to take it to my bathtub which is a hassle but it's really worth it in the long run because I have found that then your plants get dusty is the number one way to 
getting a pest i know it sounds weird but especially spider mites spider mites really do like a good dusty leaf they're really small you know they can come in through the cracks in the window they can come in through cracks in the door i've heard that some of these pests can even be on flies Ooh, which is so gross i <laughs> don't know how true that is but some of them are really small so i can kind of see it being true so that is my biggest tip to you is to definitely find some time to clean your foliage i know if you have a lot of plants it's a hassle but it is so worth it at the end it's been the best way for me to keep pests at bay another thing you can do is you can go ahead and treat your plants with a systemic there is a popular systemic by benide it's pretty much like a fine gray powder that you sprinkle on your plant you do want to be careful with it though because I have treated my plants, over-treated my plants, and they have suffered. Um, in some cases, some plants do die from it. So just be sure to follow the instructions on the bottle. Sometimes, you know, I do go a little bit harder if I do have an outbreak of pest. But if you were doing it for a preventative measure, definitely just follow the instructions on the bottle. And anytime a bug will eat your plant, it will die because that's what the systemic does. So you wanna be careful with any animals that might nibble on your plants. If you have kids, kids do some crazy stuff, trust me, I know. Um, just keep them away from the soil or from chewing on the plant. And then also if you're bringing plants outside, these can kill pollinators as well. So make sure you're not putting those plants outside as well. Another way of preventing pests, and I know it's kind of annoying, a lot of people say it and not a lot of people do it, but quarantining your new plants. I know I, for the longest time, I didn't really have a place to quarantine my new plants, but if you can, when you get a new plant, try to just like leave it on your dining room table or leave it in a corner just for a couple of days so you can monitor it. Make sure that you don't see any creepy crawlers on it because the minute that that foliage touches another foliage, another piece of leaf, bam, all of a sudden you have pets, you know? So they travel really, really easy. It's kind of a nightmare for people who have a collection like me because all my foliage touch, but it's just what you have to deal with when you have plants. Now, as far as knowing if your plant has pests, each pest can show up differently on your plant, but some telltale signs are seeing some sort of yellowing on your leaves, usually like yellowing dots. If your plant is throwing out maybe like four or five yellowing leaves at the same time, definitely that's a red flag. One or two yellowing leaves isn't really um, something to worry about because plants will naturally do that on their own. They naturally kill off the bottom of their growth, their oldest growth. But if you see more three, five leaves yellowing all at once, definitely go ahead and check your plant. Sometimes the new growth will come in really mottled looking. So it'll come in either looking discolored or it'll come in looking misshapen, almost wrinkly. Maybe the leaf didn't form the way that it usually forms. That's another really big red flag to go ahead and check your foliage. And then another one is maybe like, let's say you have a Hoya for example, and you see that it's trying to put out a vine, but it can't put out a vine that's another red flag. And anytime you're looking at your foliage and you see something running away, little tiny dots scattering, that's definitely a red flag. Each pest kind of has their own thing, but those are some definite like big red flags to look out for. Let's say you did all the preventative measures and you still ended up with a pest. I'm so sorry. It sucks. The first thing to do is not to freak out because honestly, freaking out and overtreating your plant is probably the fastest way to kill it, even faster than the pest itself. I will tell you that firsthand. I have killed quite a few plants overtreating them because I freaked out about pests. And I know it's really stressful, especially when you put all this money into your plants, into purchasing them, into caring for them. But just take it day by day. Don't overtreat your plants. It's the worst thing that it's gonna happen. They're not gonna like it. It's chemicals after all, so they can't handle it on top of that. So just kind of take a deep breath, assess the situation, try to isolate that one plant if you can or the surrounding plants if the foliage is touching, and just go ahead and treat those plants. What I like to do first is I will completely hose down the plant. I have this power sprayer that you put water in and you pump it and it will power spray 
anything so I used to use this now I use my hose outside or even my shower head I got this on Amazon you can also get it at Home Depot or Lowe's I'll have the link down below if you want to check that out but I will go ahead and thoroughly rinse the rinse the plant off and my favorite spray to use Captain Jack's dead bug brew this stuff is <laughs> really amazing really effective the company as you can see right there is called benign they make a lot of plant products and they're all really effective from my experience they make that systemic granule powder that i was just talking about they make a lot of spray bottles also but this one has been really good and right on the label it says that it treats spider mites bagworms leaf miners tent caterpillars thrips a lot of different stuff it is mainly used for outside plants which is why it has all these other bugs on there as well but it's really great to treat your inside plants as always though, read the labels, make sure you're using it properly. Just be careful, that, that's what I'm trying to say. Use it, use it carefully. <laughs> Another spray I like to use is just good old fashioned water and Dawn soap. I'll put it in a spray bottle and I will just go ahead, spray the plant down, spray the leaves down, take a cloth and wipe down all areas of the plant that I can. I have also found that using a toothbrush is really good. Rachel from Heart Shaped Leaves kind of introduced me to this. Getting a toothbrush and just very gently scrubbing the whole leaf, scrubbing the stems, anywhere that the plant touches, even moss holes, if you have moss holes, trellises, anything that your plant touches, go ahead and treat it and go ahead and scrub it down. Using the toothbrush is really effective if you have a really bad outbreak. However, you do wanna be gentle because it's really easy to go ham with a toothbrush and then a few days later, your plant is all scratched up. Another effective way people like to use, especially when you have scale and mealybugs is alcohol, isopurple alcohol, getting it, taking the Q-tip, dabbing the Q-tip in alcohol, and just individually going through and getting all those little suckers, especially when it comes to scale because scale doesn't move <laughs> and they do have a tough outer shell. So I think alcohol is kind of the most effective way of using it. And as far as neem oil, neem oil is a very popular product a lot of people use bugs will eat it and and the neem oil doesn't kill them instantly but it will kill them over time however i have found neem oil to not be really that effective and it smells really bad Ugh, like so bad i know there's like a few people like five percent of people that like the smell of neem oil but it is horrid let me tell you absolutely horrid but just in my personal experience it hasn't really been effective in treating an outbreak but if that's something that you want to use, neem oil is pretty available in big box stores and in Amazon. They have spray bottles of neem oil already available. So if you want to try that, go ahead. A lot of people do swear by it. And another thing you want to be mindful about when you are using these foliage sprays is to make sure you keep your plants out of any sort of light because it will most likely burn your foliage somehow, especially if you're putting them under grow lights or if you're putting them underneath the direct sunlight. Just let them cool off for a day. I like to do my pest prevention at night because that way they have the night to recuperate and by the next day they are doing A-OK. -okay. Now another really annoying pest that's not really as detrimental to your plants as the other pests I mentioned are fungus gnats. Fungus gnats are more so just a nuisance unless they get really out of control. If you have a really bad outbreak, they can go ahead and start feasting on the roots of your plants. They can even go and burrow into the stems of your plants, but don't worry. I've only seen that happen once and that outbreak was really bad. <laughs> so that's kind of like more of a rare occasion, but fungus gnats are annoying. They get everywhere i've had fungus gnats fly up my nose and in my mouth like i'm i'm not joking <laughs> and the most effective way i found to help my fungus gnat situation is to use hydrogen peroxide now hydrogen peroxide is a bit controversial because it does kill everything in your soil use it with caution i like to do 50 percent hydrogen peroxide 50 percent water and then i will go ahead and water my plant and my soil thoroughly with it. You can even see it bubbling up a little bit. Your soil will get kind of poofy. You can also kind of hear some sizzling going on in the soil. It's quite it's quite an adventure, let me tell you. I would definitely recommend following up your next watering with some sort of 
fertilizer, maybe a slow release fertilizer and a liquid fertilizer, just whatever have you, just to help the plant replenish that nutrients that it lost. Fungus gnats like to lay their eggs in the first few inches of the topsoil and the hydrogen peroxide really helps get that larva. And the sticky chaps, the yellow sticky chaps, I know they're really unsightly, but they work really amazing in catching those adult fungus gnats so they cannot get their way back into the soil and lay more eggs. <laughs> I know some people don't really like to use hydrogen peroxide. Some people say that it doesn't work. So this is when you have to just go and experiment. You know, everything is just trial and error. I've tried a lot of things when it came to fungus gnats, so that's what helped me out the most. Also, you wanna consider where you're getting your soil from because Miracle Grow, for example, they do have a really bad reputation of having fungus gnats. I have experienced that firsthand. When I first was starting my plant journey, I used Miracle Grow all the time, like it's readily available anywhere you go. But I also had my biggest fungus gnat outbreak and it wasn't fun. I, I had so many gnats. And it was just, it was gross. I don't want to feel fungus gnats in my nose. Ugh. Now I use coca coir, which is really amazing for me. And I don't have to worry about fungus gnats being in it. I don't know what it is about Miracle Girl soil, but I swear theirs are just, they're just the worst kind of soil. It stays so moist. Even when you open up the bag, it just stays so moist. And fungus gnats really love a moist environment. So if you're an overwaterer, just definitely keep an eye out. Maybe let your plants dry out a little bit more to get them to not want to lay their eggs there and just go away. But yeah, that's a quick rundown on fungus gnats. I can really go on and on about them, but really a lot of people have fungus gnats and they're not really too much to worry about. Like I said, just more so very annoying. And I think that wraps it up for this video. I think that's all the things that I can think of when it comes to pests. Uh, I guess my biggest advice to you is just to take a deep breath. I know pests are stressful and kind of ugly and kind of scary if you're like me, <laughs> but it honestly, when you have plants, and especially when you have a bigger plant collection, it's going to happen. I hate to say it, but you can take every preventative step possible and you'll still somehow get something it's just what we have to deal with. <laughs> and I can assure you, everybody that you see on YouTube or on Instagram or TikTok have dealt with some sort of pest problem in their journey, so you're not alone. Trust me on that. There's so much information out there, thankfully, to help you deal with it and do not overtreat your plants. Take it from somebody who has done it multiple multiple times. Don't freak out, don't overtreat your plants. I promise it'll be okay. If all else fails, just cut all, all the foliage off and start from a stick. You know, it sucks, but <laughs> it's one surefire way to make sure that there's no pest, so. <laughs> and you know, also, if you need to throw the plant away, just throw it away. I've done that also. I had a peperomia that I thought had spider mites and it just had so many leaves on it. There was no way I was gonna be able to treat it. I took a couple cuttings off of it because cuttings are way easier to treat than a full plant and I threw the plant away. It's better to take care of your sanity than it is to take care of plants. And I, I, I know that sounds kind of weird, but when you have pests, it can be really, really stressful. And it can kind of make you feel like a bad plant parent. And I promise you, you're not. You're doing the best that you can do. And that's what we have to offer, the best that we can. So if you need to throw that plant away, by all means, do it. It'll be okay, I promise. So I hope you found this video to be helpful. I hope you don't have to deal with massive pest outbreak like I have before. I hope all your plants stay pest free and I hope they just grow amazingly for you. If you have any tips on pest prevention or treating pests, definitely leave them in the comments down below so other people can come check out the comment section and maybe get some tips from you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I will be more than happy to help you any way that I can. If you haven't already, definitely go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Join the planting community. Doesn't matter if you're a millennial planter or not. I welcome all generations and I hope you all are staying safe, sane, happy, and healthy. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.